Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is misled. Misled. Now, if you've been walking this earth any kind of time, you've been misled before. Uh, and it could be somebody that uh, you loved. It could be somebody that you despised. It could be somebody you thought was leading you the right way. And it could be somebody maybe you thought they were leading you the wrong way anyway, and you still decided to follow them. In any case, it is very easy to be misled. And especially today in our day and time, right? I mean, there's fact checks everywhere, right? And that's making sure everybody's telling the truth. But even that is still governed by people that decide what's fact or not. And that's not even correct. But we're not getting into that game today. What we want to look at and think about is, is what Isaiah was hearing from the Lord. Now, you remember that he's using the Assyrians as a tool in the hand of God. And so what he's encouraging Isaiah here as well, and it's a message that Isaiah is passing on um, to the people of Israel and Judah to say, don't be misled. Don't, don't go astray any further. Don't believe the lies. Right. And you're going to see this word conspiracy right off the beginning. He, he's saying, don't believe the lies of what everybody would have you think that that the Assyrians are going to be victorious. Remember, it is better for you to fear God than it is to fear them. And that's what we need to focus on even for us today. But let's hear what God says in Isaiah uh, chapter 8, verses 11 through 15 today. He says, For the Lord spoke thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, do not say a conspiracy concerning all that this people call a conspiracy, nor be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. The Lord of hosts, him you shall hallow. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread. He will be as a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel as a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble, and they shall fall and be broken, be snared and taken. Here again, he's even given them an opportunity to fear God more than the enemy. And he says, but look, for even those who don't want to listen to my word even now, I'm telling you, he says, not only should they fear me, but when they decide not to fear me, then I'm going to get in their way so that they fall, so that they stumble and fall and are taken captive. Now, I don't know about you, but I would a whole lot rather, you know, be still in obedience than to go against God. Because then as you're going against God, you may think, okay, hey, I got that first step. Nobody noticed. I got that second step. I got that third step. And, and, and just like even trying to sneak away from your parents or sneak away from your teacher when you were in school or something like that, you know, you're going to sneak out without getting caught. Those first couple steps, we think everything's going to be okay. But then something happens. There's a stumbling block or there's an offense put there in our way. I've given the example uh, in my own life when I was a teenager. Left the house one time when I was not supposed to and, and drove when I was not supposed to. And, and of course, I was going to see a beautiful young lady who I later decided to marry. But anyway, I was going to see her. And then what happens? I get a speeding ticket. So now I'd snuck out of the house, thought I was going to get by without being noticed or being seen and I get a speeding ticket, then I thought I'd still get home before, you know, they figured it out, before my parents figured it out, and then I just have to figure out how I was going to tell them I got a speeding ticket. And I get home and there they are already at home. Well, that was part of it already done. And then part of it I had to fess up to what else had happened. Now, you think about that is that it's the same way. We think for a moment that we're getting away with something, when all the while, you know, I may have been fooling myself, <laughs> that was it. I may have even fooled my parents for just a little while, but I never for a moment fooled God. And so God, when we do dumb things, God will get in our way and maybe cause us to stumble as a result of our sin. Now, that's the thing to think about, that the consequences of our sin that we do have to face. It doesn't mean that every time that you fall into a circumstance that's unpleasant that it's a result of sin but know that quite often we just don't like to admit 
that we're sinners and we don't like to admit that we've done wrong and admit that we really need to face the consequences of our sin. But at the end of the day, he is reminding them. He says, look, Isaiah, you need to pay attention. You need to not pay attention to the words of men. You need to pay attention to the word of, of, that I'm telling you, the word of God. And so don't be misled. You know me, I love Romans 12, Romans 12 too. But do not be conformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It was even our Sunday school lesson this past week as well. Look, be, be transformed. Right. Don't be conformed. And that's what the world wants you to do. And even then, Isaiah was facing the same thing, that even the religious people wanted him to fit in a box, wanted God to fit in a box and and wanted everybody to conform to their thoughts. And God says, no, what you need to do is not be misled, but you need to be led by the word of God, led by the spirit of God, led by the will of God. Just plain and simple. Today, let's choose to walk in obedience, not in our own steps, not on our own path, but on a path that God wills for us and on a path that he is leading. Where he leads, we should follow. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.